All right, welcome to Hidden Gems in Nature. Going to do another equipment uh, short with you. This one is one I use for overnight kayaking or canoeing trips. Um, a lot of my canoe trips and kayak trips are just class two or class three uh, runs. Uh, they're anywhere from two days to five days, depending on where we're at. Um, I, I don't do big fours and fives. I'm not, uh, I'm not that skilled. And most guys who do fours and fives don't, don't run overnight trips because their kayaks aren't built for it. So my kayaks are a little bit bigger um, so that I can take equipment on them. So I'll start this one the same way I start them all. I have a backpacking checklist. That's right, backpacking, not kayaking checklist. The reason I say that is you want to be really light in your kayaks. The lighter you are in your kayak, or your canoe, the more maneuverable you are. So go ultra light. So the same thing, I'll tell you when you backpack, you go ultra light. When you kayak, go ultra light. But I'm gonna talk about one or two items that are a little bit better or that you'll want for kayaking trips. You don't have to go out and spend a fortune on, uh, on water bags. You can see all these water bags here. Some of these water bags are, this water bag uh, my dad bought in 1980. Okay, so what's that? 40 years old. Does it work? Uh, well, it doesn't keep water out, but it still works, and I'll explain. This is another dry bag. Got a couple of other dry bags. They come in lots of different sizes and shapes. This dry bag, I can put my iPhone in or my, or my Android and still touch through it and take pictures through it. So a lot of people like these little nifty dry bags because they can take pictures with their cameras right in them. Very handy. This is what really keeps everything dry. This is a trash bag. Just a common trash bag. All you want the bag for is to protect the plastic bag. The plastic bag keeps your equipment dry. This bag protects the plastic bag. I used to take duffel bags on my trips. Some didn't even seal at the top. Um, they just pulled tight. You could put all kinds of water in them, but inside those bags was two separately sealed trash bags. And all you do to seal them is you lift them up, spin the item, spin it down tight, fold it over and stick it down. I don't use a twisty tire or anything. I stick it down, then I fold the second. Same thing with the second bag. Make sure you get the air out of it as you do it. Spin it around till it's real long and tight. Spun down, fold it down, shut the bag, and you're good. I have never gotten anything wet when I've done it that way. Be careful your zippers don't tear the bag um, or that anything else doesn't tear the bag, but it's the bag that keeps them dry. Use the trash bag. It's a really inexpensive way to do it because none of these bags last. I've never had one of these bags last for more than about four or five years, although this one lasted for quite some time. This rubber uh, Hydro Venture Seattle sports bag. Um, this bag, I love this bag, but it only lasted about four or five years. Now, um, another kind of container that you can take, watertight container, I used to take a container like this. I used to carry it for my camera, but now you've got all kinds of waterproof cameras, so you don't need something like this. But it does come in handy for, for some equipment as well. It's just another alternative for equipment. Um, and then these. I love the straps because when you're in a kayak or a canoe, um, you don't know what you're going to lose when you flip. And, and a lot of people flip, and it's no big deal because you're not in real big rapids, you still have to be safe, but you don't want to lose your equipment. So I buy these little web straps, um, or you can make them. Either way, I've made them and I've bought them. And they work great and they keep your equipment all intact. Um, second to last item I want to share with you is called a solder it. Never had seen one before. I went on a kayaking trip, a three day kayaking trip through a wilderness area, so there was no way to get out unless we hiked anywhere from three to seven miles to a road. And then that road was still probably another 30 miles before you got to a highway of any sort. Um, and who knows if there was a cell phone reception. Mile and a half into the trip, uh, my son split his kayak from top to bottom, 12 inch split, sunk it. The kid had never tipped his kayak over in his entire life. Here he was, 13, 14 years old, never flipped. He'd probably been on 20 trips and we had a split all the way down the seam. We took this heated solder it. The guy I was with happened to have one. He heated it up. We found a flat rock on the river. While he heated, I sealed up the, uh, the crack all the way down, about a 12-inch crack, as I mentioned. 
After we sealed up the crack, he crawled up into the nose, sealed it a couple of places in there. We duct taped it, and off we went down the river and finished it. It was a 33-mile, three-day trip. Um, we finished it because of this. So I take this on all my trips now because of that experience. Last but not least, or one of these, most of you guys probably think that you take this on the airplane so that you can sleep real well. And that's what it's for. But the way, what I use this for is when you carry a kayak, I usually carry it on my shoulder. And so if you just turn it sideways and put that um, kayak up on your shoulder like this, boy, does it take the weight off you. Again, I'm getting older, man, so I'm looking for easier ways to do things. Okay, the last thing I want to make you aware of on the river is this. Um, some rivers have high regulations, and if they don't have regulations, they have great suggestions because uh, there's so many people who are running rivers now nowadays. A lot of them require wag bags. For those of you who don't know what a wag bag is, look it up online. You go to the bathroom in them. And once you use them, you have to have a water tape tight container on your boat or on your kayak or whatever device, your raft, whatever you're using. I use an ammo can. You can pick one of these things up at Walmart for five bucks and it has to be water sight and sealable and that's literally what you store your human waste in when you backpack in it or when you kayak in and out on some of the rivers. Even some backpacking trips like Tetons and things require these things. They also require fire pans. Look at the regulations for the rivers that you go on. Um, they are, many of the rivers are highly regulated. So these are just some additional items that come in handy um, when you're on a kayak trip. But, most importantly, check your checklist, the backpack checklist. I use the same exact equipment on a, on a kayaking trip as I do on a backpacking trip. Ultra light, uh, comfortable equipment with a few additional items for the kayak. Have a great trip down the river. Okay, welcome back. You don't see any of my whitewater equipment in front of me, and that's because I forgot something. That's what this checklist is for. Don't forget anything. So I need to add this item to my checklist for my kayak trips. What this is, this is funny, man. You're going to like these. These are socks for your big toe. Can you see that? Socks for your big toe. Let me tell you where they wear these things regularly. They wear these things in Japan in those wooden, those wooden shoes they wear. They're called getta, and they wear these things with their getta. But what's cool about them is when I'm whitewatering, I'm in water shoes, and my feet are wet all day long. And when you get into camp at night, and it's cold at night, you don't be wearing wet shoes. So I always take a pair of flip-flops with me. Um, something to wear in the hot sand um, or in the cold sand or in the cold night and I always put a pair of dry socks on when I get into camp and I want something to wear with the flip-flops and that's what you wear with the flip-flops you probably figured this out but they don't sell these in just any store so go online you can find them um, online have a great whitewater trip stay warm and comfortable